Machine Learning, Deep Learning, Intelligence Artificielle. Aujourd'hui, on vous propose un JT spécial avec Paul Chang, le spécialiste du domaine. La Médicale vous présente le journal du RSNA. Hi Paul, this is a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, we have been talking a lot about AI. Uh, what are the real changes uh, for radio radiologists in their everyday life? Uh, well, thanks for inviting me to speak again. It was a pleasure. Um, you know, as we talked about last year, um, we are riding this hype curve, this Gartner hype curve. And I, I, the metaphor I use is the hype curve is very similar to a roller coaster ride. I don't know about you, but I used to enjoy roller coasters when I was so young. It means we're going to get down there. Well, exactly right. So the whole idea of the hype curve is just like a roller coaster. As you're going up and up and up, you're all excited. And we've gone through the phase. And the good news is we've gone through the initial fear. All right, like, oh my gosh, AI is going to replace us. We've done a pretty good job uh, educating current radiologists, so that's not the fear, that this hopefully will help us. Now, to be honest, as an aside, we're not doing a very good job educating future radiologists. There's going to be a number of papers, both in Europe, as well as the United States, as well as Canada, one that I was involved in, where when you survey medical students, they are actually being actively dissuaded from going into radiology because of the fear of AI. So although we've done a good job getting rid of the hype and fear for current radiologists, I think there's more education and work to be done for our future radiologists. But you, you get to tell them that uh, there's a future in radiology. We need, we need to, okay, because our, our, our heritage has been that we attract the best and brightest uh, students in radiology, and in order to do that, we have to do a better job at educating. But getting back on that roller coaster ride, we, as I said, we've done a good job getting rid of all the fear and, and hysteria. But, but the problem, you know when you go on the, the roller coaster ride and you're right up at the top and then suddenly you go down and then you suddenly realize, why did I stand for this? I, I'm not having fun anymore. In other words, this is about to get real. Now, the Gartner Hype Curve calls this the beginning of the trench of disillusionment, all right? We are, my sense is that I talk to people, we're kind of exactly right over the peak, and now people are going to go, especially vendors, and many of us who are charged with trying to make this work in the real world, as you mentioned, we're now realizing this is about to get real. And that's where all the challenges are. The anxieties, the realistic challenges that exist are now becoming important. And that's what we're saying here. We have certain challenges, first structural as well as economic. I think one of the major challenges we have is something we talked about last time. Uh, you know, the analogy is AI is like a fancy race car or, or the fastest car. It doesn't matter if the car is fast, the fastest car still needs gas and roads. Without gas and roads, it's a hunk of metal, won't work. The gas when it comes to AI is annotated data and our IT infrastructure still doesn't have the ability to feed this. And in fact, there's a catch-22. It's the reason why still the majority, in my opinion, the majority of use cases that you see that are being offered are nice-to-haves, don't get me wrong, especially as radiologists, and we'll get about that problem in a bit. Um, but they're not must-haves. They're not something that the hospital is going to say, this is really important, because from the perspective of the hospital, what they want as must-haves are defined by three things, either total cost of ownership, return on investment, or regulatory requirement. And unfortunately, there's this mismatch between what excites radiologists and what excites the hospital. But the hospital, at the end of the day, is going to write the check. And that's, again, a predictable early sign that we're still very in the beginning of this hype cycle or this roller coaster ride. Uh, this idea of differentiating nice to haves to must haves is this thing we have to go through. Now, part of the problem is that re-radiologists, especially in places like this, this is a perfect residence chamber, kind of a self-residence echo chamber where data scientists and radiologists get together and after a couple beers and discussions, we're convinced that whatever we're going to do is going to change the world. And in reality, it is probably too radiology-centric at this time, right? This emphasis on just the convolutional neural network for images and ignoring the fact that when you look at other industries, and I'm a big fan of intellectual arbitrage, I believe the best way to understand our future is to look at other industries past who are more advanced than us, um, is that we should be spending 
as much, if not more time, looking and exploring the power of artificial intelligence and deep learning on extracting information from our unstructured narratives, our textual reports. That's what other industries have done. We could do the same. And I think a lot of the must-have applications or use cases may come from that. I think the second issue, in addition to the gas, which is the data, the roads, workflow integration. And you mentioned, you know, one of the problems now is we have existing PACs and EMR infrastructures. They Right now, uh, it is difficult to fit or understand how seamlessly, how we're going to seamlessly integrate these AI offerings into our existing systems without adding more inefficiency. Because the whole idea of this is to help us add more value. But how is it going to do that is if it's going to increase the time it takes to actually read each case. I saw a couple of companies, you know, I've been, for example, to the Terrarican uh, booth, you know, and they're right. working on that. They're working on a work workflow. Uh, have you been on that booth? Uh, yes. Uh, full disclosure, I'm on their advisory panel. So I'm familiar with what they're doing, Envoy AI and all those. And there are other companies that do that, so I don't want to pick favorites. Now, this is a, a, a great example of what I think is a, a positive sign and shows that we've gone beyond the hype and now we're trying to get real. Because those, the company you mentioned, as well as others, because we don't want to play favorites here, um, are trying to provide infrastructure to enable that this technology to be integrated in our workflow. I call that a shovel hedge play. The analogy is, I think we mentioned this last time, you know, during the gold rush, everyone went to dig for gold. Most of those people failed or literally died. But the people who succeeded to this day are the people who show, sold them the shovels or the jeans. And I think those companies are critical to as enabling agents to allow this. It's still early times. What they're doing is important, but still not fully mature. Uh, but it's a sign that that we're beginning to understand that we're past the hype and now we now the hard boring work starts we have to make this real and that's not that sexy but it's the one that's critical this this ride we're taking is inevitable but it but it's worthwhile now here's the third problem though the analogy of the roller coaster is not perfect it would be perfect if you say in including this roller coaster this roller coaster has no seat belts and unfortunately what's going to happen is as they go, as we go down into the trench of disillusionment, a lot of people are gonna <laughs> are gonna be thrown off, okay? Yes. And that's a problem. And what we talk what we mean by that is the first mover problem. Inevitably when you talk about any industry, especially medicine, when you have potentially potentially disruptive or transformative technology, the first movers, most of them fail. They fail because the technological solution or use case was not was a nice to have but not must have. There's no way to monetize or profit sustain in a sustainable way. Their burn rate or the, the cost to, to to start up is prohibitively expensive. An example of that is a lot of companies because we talked about the fact that we don't have the gas, we don't have annotated data. A lot of these start startups are actually paying radiologists to annotate their data sets. Right? It's a necessary thing to be an early adopter, but but that's not sustainable. So there are many, many reasons that it's a pretty safe prediction that a lot of these people are going to be thrown off the roller coaster. In other words, the first mover problems. Unfortunately, it's necessary. It's a necessary tragedy that the vast majority of people that you see here selling this will fail. But it is the fertilizer of their dead bodies that will work, that will allow uh, uh, AI to be real. All right, so we're beginning to see this. It's unfortunate, but it's a sign that we, even though we're early in the process, we are beginning to move into the realistic anxieties and the realism, uh, making this a real uh, 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 asset that we can use. I saw some, some company, you know, they are coming with a platform. Uh, you can compare that with the uh, Apple Store, you know, right. and uh, you can find a lot of uh, algorithm and uh, you go through the, the whole list, the whole bunch of algorithm and you pick up the one you want. Right. Do you think this is a future and you, do you think it's going to boost uh, AI? Okay, again, a shovel play, right? It's an infrastructure play. I think it's a clever way of doing things. I think it's one of these steps that are necessary but not sufficient. And what I mean by that is it's great. It is a discovery service, right? It's, hey, what's available and let me play with it in a safe way. Being able to play with something 
is not the same as actually operationalizing it. To operationalize it, that same thing that you're playing with has to seamlessly integrate in your workflow in a way that doesn't add more time. One of the things I find is I'm a little bit disappointed in how primitive, at least now, and again, it's understandable, this is early times and the vendors will get there, but right now their integration is really primitive and if anything is adds to inefficiency. It, it, it adds, it's, it's nice to have, but, but it's actually adding to my inefficiency in doing the work. I don't, wanna, I don't have time to look at another screen or another application to engage AI. In order for this to be mature, it's not enough just to have discovery, not to have a, you know, an app store. We now need to actually, the reason why the app store, for instance, works on Apple environment is it's not just the app store discovery, it then seamlessly works into the Apple ecosystem and the environment. The App Store and the Apple Store does both. It's not just a discovery service where you can play around, it also integrates it seamlessly into the Apple experience or the Android experience for their phone. I uh, don't want to play favorites here. Uh, we're missing that part. We have the ability to discover, but we don't have the ability to seamlessly integrate in a workflow that saves e efficiency. But there's another problem that's more practical and a more of a C-suite issue. Just because a radiologist explores and says, this is great, I like that, doesn't mean it's a must-have. Doesn't mean that the decision maker is going to say this is, because remember, the decision maker in the CC cares about return on investment, total cost of ownership. So just because it makes it easier to play with doesn't mean that mom and dad is going to buy the app. So let's finish with that, you know, you, you, there's a difference between the nice to have and the must have. Have you seen the must have? Yeah, I think, and that's the other sign that we're beginning to get real, because now the vendors, because the real challenge, how am I going to monetize, from a vendor perspective, is how am I going to stay around? And that means how am I going to monetize this? How am I going to generate, convince enough customers to, to pay me for this? Is there real value? That's a true must-have. Well, we're not going to do that unless we really are convinced it's going to improve our return on investment or total cost of ownership. And I'm actually beginning to see this. I am very, very happy to see startups now beginning to, to move away just on things like diagnosis of nodules or all that. We don't need any more of those, okay? Because the real issue that excites, that's a nice to have and radiologists, we like that. But when it comes to the C-suite, when it comes to mom and dad and the app store, what they're gonna let me buy, what they're gonna let me buy is not a nice to have. They're gonna make me buy something that improves efficiency. So when you're looking at the things that I am interested in, I like the companies that are using deep learning and artificial intelligence and advanced IT to improve efficiency. For instance, in acquisition, you're beginning to see algorithms being used to reduce the time it takes to do MR or CT. That's something that could be a must-have because that can be quantified, that can be monetized, that can actually say, yeah, I can save money if I'm doing that. Using AI to improve the efficiency and workload of the radiologist so that the throughput turnaround time is faster. Uh, so in other words, using AI to prioritize work lists or get rid of all the busy work we have to do, the measuring of lesions, the segmenting of organs, the things that are critical because right now our clinicians are demanding much more specific phenotypic characterization, right? Precision medicine. Precision therapy means I need to be more precise in my characterization, which usually means more quantitation. I don't have time to do that manually. So AI can help me with that. That could be a must-have. So these are the kinds of applications that I think are must-haves because they directly affect the things that mom and dad care about, the C-suite, things that improve efficiency, save costs, reduce length of stay, improve outcome. These are the must-haves and you're beginning to see those. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. La Medical vous a présenté le journal du RSNA.